we're going to receive our call to worship from our shofar. So if you're here in the house, I'm going to invite you to stand. And if you're online, you're welcome to stand with us in your homes as well or wherever you might be as we give glory to the Lord of hosts. Holy One, incredible, awesome God. You are so good in all your ways. You are perfect, you are holy, you are loving and you are kind. You are the giver of givers. You are the lover of lovers. Thank you, Father, that you made a way even from before creation, you knew that it was going to take redemption for your family to be whole. And I thank you that you, through your son, Jesus Christ, have made a way for us to live in wholeness, in oneness with you. Father, we receive your blessing today. We receive the Father's blessing upon our hearts. That love, that acceptance in the beloved, the identity, the calling and the promises over our lives. We step into them now and we give you honor and glory for all that you have intended, all that you have purposed, and all that you are speaking and singing over your children across the whole world today. We give you glory, Father, by glorifying your Son. So, Lord, today we lift up Jesus Christ. For he is Lord of lords. He is King of kings. He is the holy God of Israel and the holy God of all the earth. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and we love you, Father. In your perfect name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Ah. Ah. Oh! 
by glorifying the Son. We glorify you, Jesus. We know that as we exalt you, Lord Jesus, the Father's heart is enlarged bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. We are your children. We are the sheep of your pasture, Father. You are a good Father. You are a perfect God. And we honor you and we love you, God.
just to be with you is so much bigger than anything else and just to talk with you is so much better than living for myself and so I come to you your face is all I seek I press in to rest in you Jesus you're everything in you I am complete to rest in you just to be with you just to be with you your righteousness oh I receive the priceless gift
Take a moment and go welcome five people with the love of Christ. Release God's love. Let it flow. Let it grow. 
welcome everybody online. It, it is God's love that is here and your home, wherever you are. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God that the love of God, love covers so much. Love covers all sin. Lord, we just receive it this morning. We just thank you for the love that's been poured out in our hearts, shed abroad in our hearts as we've just been receiving. I just the Spirit of God has been here just pouring Lord. out the love of God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. He's here, he's here, he's here. So, yep. come on in, find your seat. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Yes, happy Father's Day. Happy to Father's Day. To all of the fathers in the house, to all the grandpas, to, to our precious Father Jesus God. Wants us to come, happy Father's Day. Okay. I think Jesus wants us to come, happy Father's okay. Day. Okay, I think I, thank you. Jesus would like us to tell the Father Happy Father's Day. Can we do that for a moment? Happy that's, Father's yes, Day. Totally Happy Father's right. Day. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. That's good. Happy, and I just want to thank him. I want to thank our Heavenly Father that he came up with such an awesome plan to rescue us from ourselves, to rescue us from sin, to buy us back, and to plan to take care of us. Yep, yep. And he placed us in his son. So we can't get lost. And if we do get lost, we know where to go. Because it's always the doors open and always the, the acceptance is there. So, wow. But I believe today God's going to release the Father's blessing. And I'm excited about that. I'm anticipating that. And uh, really, we want to, we want to, I guess... Pray for the offering. Is there anything else yeah, for us to I, say? I want to also just thank everyone who's helped in these past couple of weeks as we've been celebrating these home goings of these beautiful saints. I mean, I just feel there's been so much almost like electricity in the air because there are things that they've carried that I believe God's wanting to release to us new and fresh. But it's also been you know, a lot of work, and I know like this morning, I woke up and I was like, oh gosh, you know, do I have to go to church, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I know that there is something God is doing. I don't understand it, but it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we celebrated John Duda, which was what their family is a fa founding family of our church and his passing, and there was such a unlocking of hearts and a blessing and transference of life and healing and miracles. And it's what, what we're saying is that in our journey together, whether you've just started with us or you've been journeying for decades with us, there is a, a, there's a, a blessing that's grown, like a, a cloud that's being un, yes, un, yes. unlocked into our lives. And like Jesus said to his disciples, says, you're entering into a harvest that other men sowed, but you get to come in and reap. So I think anticipate the, getting yes. the sheaves. Yeah. Amen. And anticipate yeah. blessing coming. That's now been, and again, all blessing comes from one man. What yeah. God and one man accomplished at the cross, at the, res, at the new birth, at the resurrection, at the ascension, now his place of high priest. All blessing comes from him. All blessing, the Father's blessing is in the Son. So it, it helps for me to realize I'm not qualifying for it. I'm just finding my place in it, in him. So, oh, come on. You should be expect something a little more than that. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'm tired. <laughs> we are tired. and We have gone a long week, long weeks. We've had three saints beaten. Put to, put to, you know, not rest. They were already resting before we had a service. <laughs> but to honor memory and to, re, and, to, and to release and let go. But I'm looking forward to the things that are coming. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the things Amen. that are coming. And, and we just want to speak grace and strength, to to all the daddies in the house. Yeah, that's a, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for all the work and... All of the 
teams that are picking up and you know we're so appreciative of the church transitioning so that we're all functioning one week a month like priests in the old testament when david set up the house of the, the design of the temple it wasn't just how the building would be built it was how the priests would function and he rotated people so they weren't and everybody had a set time and so we've come up with a more simpler idea of just everyone serving one week a month coming on sunday engaged worship welcome our team of welcoming loving embracing receiving into the glory of god every week don't you enjoy coming in and just get loved on and received and welcomed. And, see, we're a family yes. in, in heaven and on earth, but it's the same Jesus you that know, we're it under. It just occurred to me, too, that yesterday being <laughs> Juneteenth, yeah. that there was also a great deliverance that was taking place over us. And I think today is something to do with the refugees. Yeah, world refugee. Yeah, yeah so... You guys, we're getting set free, and you know what? Thank God we're not in a refugee camp, no matter how bad we think our life is. This morning I woke up, and like I said, I was having a wine fest, you know. Not, wait, that came out wrong. I was whining, and, and the Lord caught me. I just got it. <laughs> I wish, right? No. <laughs> But I was like, gosh, no matter, I mean, even if I'm tired, I'm not in a refugee camp. Yeah, amen. But I'm receiving the intent of God's heart yeah. that we all get set free. And to, yeah, and to rescue us, and to redeem us, and to bring yeah. us into our inheritance, and into family, and to be whole in every way. So the week of worship and then a week of, on Wednesday is a day of prayer fasting we spend the we open the sanctuary and we seek the Lord from 6 to 6 and then what we've just begun is taking that 6 p.m. to 7 30 and make it a service of testimony of manifestation of allowing God to access the whole congregation with the blessing that he's been giving us through prayer so let's uh, ask God's blessing on our giving and our team and our service and our love lord father we thank you that you have moved us from uh, uh out of covid out into yes into health and into wealth and well-being but it's not because the circumstances of life have so immediately changed it's because you've given us a new heart <laughs> you put a new heart inside of us and you cause it to become fresh and, and soft and responsive and allows us to give of our tithe and honor you first, but it also gives of our time and welcomes one another into our lives. It gives place and room and grace, opens our heart to give good things away with our mouth and bless one another and receive one another. Thank you for what you have accomplished and are accomplishing. And as we bring you our tithes, our offerings, as we give you our love and share our, your love with others, that we are part of something that's beyond what we could be, but if we tried to achieve it, all we are doing is receiving it. Let it flow, Lord. Let the river flow. Let the blessings come. Let the window of heaven open as you've promised and pour it out, the pouring out blessings that are beyond anything we can gather or understand or fully receive in one moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's go ahead and receive. If you need an envelope, lift up your hand.
Yes, 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 yes. Wow, beautiful, beautiful new worship song. What a testimony. Yay, Val, yay. Wait, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, hallelujah. Welcome, guys. Good job. Good job, good job, good. You know, getting to sing the songs that are springing up in our spirits and our hearts and our messages and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we begin to sing, we begin to see, we begin to say, and it all begins to become the testimony of Jesus. And that testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And that means that from whatever we begin to sing and see and say and declare grows. And that's why, you know, be free. I mean, we're a crazy old place, man. This is cool. We have two beautiful sisters pop up and say, hey, that's what love's doing for me right now. I want to love my Lord and pray and sing and what? Is that okay with everybody? I mean, we stopped trying to do church as a system that God looked at that he then said, oh, you're being very reverent, so I will come. Now we're trying to just respond to the party atmosphere of heaven and just come alive. Now, you don't have to do that. That's, that's the cool thing. Everybody gets to do whatever you want. And I'll tell you a secret. In your heart, create, give, is a place where you can fellowship, and with your mouth, you proclaim it, and with your imagination, you experience it. So you can start dancing in your heart. You can start praising God from a heavenly perspective, from a heavenly realm and just begin to declare I am healthy, wealthy and wise in Christ, I'm blessed and before you know it I, I mean the only danger in this is you might forget it's in your heart and what happens in your heart starts showing up in your feet but that's okay, we're, we're okay with that, right? We'll just let anybody get it out praise you Jesus all right, I probably will, if I go to the scriptures, I'm gonna, I know where I'm starting from is Hebrews 12. Uh, this is I, the, the word the Father's blessing. On Wednesday, the prayer went so much into the Father's blessing and all of the dimensions of the Father's blessing. Elijah's heart, uh, spirit of Elijah turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons, hearts of the sons to the fathers, the whole dynamic of the power of the blessing and this being Father's Day and, and yet it's also the 20th of June is always that World Refugee uh, Day and you know there's something like 86 million refugees currently at the present moment some of them in transition some of them just really stuck uh, we support uh, ministry in uh, with Springs of Hope that have been responding to like like in Ethiopia a refugee camp burning down and when that happens, it's like you start building the old camp again. And it's just, it's just, but hope is alive. Kindness moves people forward. Uh, joy, it gives us strength. And being a part of helping give others. Lisa's desire was, okay, uh, the little boy lost his bike that his dad barely had enough money to get from a secondhand store. What we're going to do is get the money and buy the boy a brand new bike from a beautiful place. See, that's the God response to, to misery and hardship and des desolation is that he overwhelms us in goodness and his kindness. So I want to, Father, I just ask you now because you're, this is your day and it's all the Father's day. And it's a day you have things in mind that you would want to do for us. All that's been done in your son is available to us. We're so grateful for this. 
And I don't want to take up your time. I really want you to take up our time. Would you like you to step in by your spirit? I'd like you to activate us as you see us, call us forth. Just worship you because you are perfect. You are the father of lights with whom there's no variation or shifting shadow. Every good gift comes down from above. You're the father of Jesus to whom as he walked with you in the earth, you could declare, you're my son. I'm well pleased with you. And at the end, you said, you're my well. You're my son. I'm well pleased. Now everybody hear him. Now that he's come forth, you brought him off the cross, out of death by declaring him, you are my son today. I have begotten you. And he became the firstborn of a new creation life-giving spirits to whom we are now joined inside Christ and becoming to take on that place. As we bore the image of the earthly man, we will bear the image of the heavenly man. And yet, what a, what a journey. And so often it's fraught with dis- distress, and troubles, struggles, injustices. And yet, you say in all of this, We can find love. We can experience hope. We can find healing. We can come out of any place by coming into Christ wherever we are. Oh, Holy Spirit, we need you. You were the greatest gift after Christ, what became the gift of salvation and faith in his resurrection and on and on. But now you're the proclaimer. You're the announcer. You're the one that demonstrates all that has been given us, manifests in all the ways we need, convicts our hearts of sin and righteousness and judgment, pulls us out of places we ought not to be, and frees us to go forward into things that are ours that we could never believe that we could have. Oh, come. Father, we love you. Jesus, you are Lord. You sit on a throne next to majesty. You are not on a cross and you're not on the Galilee shores. You are sitting next to the majesty on high, a high priest a king of righteousness, a king of peace, a royal priest. And there we are brought forth as we come under the sound of your testimony of who you have become, what you have done, where you are. And we grow up into that place, into the head. We're your body, you're the head. We're your wife, you're our husband. We are your temple for God to dwell in, but you're the cornerstone. You are the firstborn of many, brethren. Lord, I thank you for the intercession that's growing in the church in the hearts of your sons and daughters and crying out for your manifestation. So, Lord, now release the sound that you want said and what you want to do in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it was uh, 21 years ago in August this year will be my, when my, my father passed away. And uh, I was really comforted uh, uh, by the father and this being surrounded, even though it's very hard having a transition like that, you know, when it's as young as, you know, as the younger you are, I think the harder it is. But I was comforted because Deanna had been praying, Deanna Madrid, and she said, oh Lord, please, please, please be a, be a supporter, be a help, be a father to, to Steve now that he's lost his father. And the Lord interrupted her and said, I, I've been his father for a long time. And so she came and told me that. And I said, well, I, I know that's true. He really is my father. And I was blessed to learn in the scriptures from Jesus in his test, in the gospels, that when I pray, I pray our father to father. To ask in his name, but to father. So you, you grow a relationship with God the father. But what I've now discovered in the most glorious way, and I, wanna, I believe that God wants to unlock that for all of us today, is that the father's blessing is in his son. See, if I'm having a relationship with the Father, which I have through Christ, I could still get in this idea that it's kind of up to me to do my part, to stay in the place that I need to be and live a way that he will be satisfied and then he'll help me. And if I, therefore, the opposite is if I don't live a way that's pleasing and satisfying, then he might begin to withdraw and be not that much a part of me. And so then I'm in this con, this, this 
conflict. If I'm having a good day, I'm in a good place. If I'm having a bad day, I'm not in a good place. Or Christianity was something that by observing and honoring God's principles and following the Father's way, then life would get better and higher and bigger. Marriages would be larger. It just everything would grow. But uh, again, if that's true, then if it's not happening, it might be because I'm not in Christ doing the right, you know, I'm now, I'm backing out. And so I live, a, a, you could feel the fatherlessness that we are all born into when you are knowing just the Father through your own faith and believing and actions. But the good news is you were meant to fail. You were meant to sin, not because God designed you that way, but he knew that's who you are. Because after Lucifer infiltrated the garden and persuaded Adam and Eve to go into high rebellion, to live a life instead of dependent upon God, inside of God's glory, to be independent of God and literally in competition with God. Self came forth, fear was born, born, shame followed, and all of the dimensions of that chaos. So he now comes and he says, okay, come and be my people, and separates a people from Egypt, calls them into himself. He brings them out of Egypt. He brings a, a priesthood. He brings a, a community. He star, establishes a nation. He builds identity into them, and he gives them the law because they said, listen, just tell us what to do, and we'll walk, we'll do whatever, whatever you tell us, because we want to walk close to you, and he says, I want to be with you, I want, I'm, here's a tabernacle, build it just like it is, it's the way it is in heaven, build it, and let me be in the center of the camp, and let me have a priesthood so that I can observe, and, but you know the story, the more you know the law, the worse you become, not because you are purposefully hypocritical, but you're trying to access God through being good, which is not possible. You cannot, the more you try to be righteous is when you know you're not. Would you say that? Would anybody say that? The more harder you try to be righteous, the re, you real you go. And then it leaves you with, what do I do? So God knew, and he, he had a plan. He was going to give his son in our place. It wasn't because, because the law was perfect, but we are imperfect, and our efforts would only compact the matter, so the law came to bring all of us under sin, in need, and now we have a Savior. But that Savior isn't someone who just saved me so I could start life again. The Savior is the way in which I now relate to my Father. I am in Christ, and I'm in a covenant of forgiveness, and I have a whole, the, all the benefits that Jesus has now obtained in being the first resurrected man, and being the coming out of the abyss, called forth as a son. Even after everything was accomplished, he was given a name greater than the angels, higher elevation, by an inheritance. The one who created all things inherits all things. This, this Jesus is so com complete that when I let him be for me what I feel I'm supposed to be for God, he does a far better job. I mean, it's amazing. I, I used to think, well, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Now I know, don't tell me what to do because that'll mess me up and I'll try to do it. And I can't do it. All I'll learn is right away that, or I'll, I'll struggle in some concept. But if I let you come and be that, like for instance, Jesus is a better father than the rest of us. And yes, Father God, God the Son, God the Father, but, but he has been given that mantle of identification inside the Father that we can come and find him. I, I let him do everything. I haven't figured out how to get him to mow the lawn, but if there was a way, maybe the angels one day will pop in. Brian, Brian, Brian got saved. He, 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 was, he doesn't like the yard work a lot, lot worse, and he was praying. He said, Lord, help me, help me. Jesus, help me. And he sees on the, across the street a, a service, and it goes, hey, Zeus, and he felt he took that from heaven that Jesus was coming. So, he, yeah, yeah, it worked. But, but no, it's not like that. We know we're going to do the work. We're going to walk of the stuff. We're, we're going to act our part. But where are you sourcing, resourcing to do what you're going to do? And what, who is determining the outcome? That makes such a difference. Jesus is a better husband than you'll ever marry. 
And why, why try to change your husband that you're married to when you've got a better husband already? Jesus will be, is a better healer than any place, anything that we're submitting to or go, disciplines we're in. But if it doesn't mean to change his discipline, it's not submit to the, you know, if he's got you in, in a, in a uh, you know, things that we should observe, taking care of our body, exercise, taking good, getting sleep, uh, following a prescribed plan to our health. Whatever God, that, that's, but it's giving him the place. When, Hebrews 12, let's just begin there. If, if this law is not the way to God, but it's inside Christ is where I get to know God, then what am I, what am I learning? What's my, how do I relate? We're learning to let Christ manifest and be our resource, and carry his, and, and live as he lived with the Father. We live with Jesus, and we're going through difficulties so that truth can become more true, and the lie can be more of a lie. And the truth and the lie, Jesus is the truth, and the lie is that we're God, or it's up to us, which is the same thing as saying, I am God. And the truth is Jesus Christ is the sufficiency, the supremacy, the King, the Lord, the Everything I'll ever need is in him, and I just have to access, and accessing is receiving. It's not achieving, it's receiving. And I, my failure was for me to discover that I'm not able to do what I tried to go do, so that after a time, I start to go, you know, I don't have to do that anymore. I'll just, I, I, will, I, will re, I will let Jesus, and I'll remind myself, Jesus, you're a better pastor than I'll ever be. You're a better father than I ever could be. You're a better judge, a better deliverer, a better healer, a better helper. You're everything. So I'm just going to not, when the fear comes and the control wants to kick in and the responsibility starts to get bigger and I start feeling like I've got to do something because if something doesn't get done, what, what, maybe it's going to be because of I didn't do what I was supposed to do, so what am I going to do? And like a Saul, you offer a sacrifice just because it makes sense. Sacrifice is what you do because that's how you make things happen. You jump off temples and God will save you. And, you know, it's, it's so silly when you hear it, but it's not silly when you're in it, right? Yeah. How many have ever been in that, right? You're the pressure, it's time, it's got to do something, I've got to get down. It's like, whoa. So Hebrews 12, the discipline is holding a relationship and allowing Christ to become all-sufficient while the world says it's up to you and if you're not where you should be, it's because of you. Where Hebrews 12, verse 1, it begins by saying, Therefore, we also, we have been surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let's run with endurance the race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're going to carry crosses. We're going to be asked to stand in a place that we don't want to be, or worse, worse. We're going to be put in a place we can't get out of. And we're going to be expected to endure that place, endure inside the place, inside Christ. When I was young, I pray, God, get me out of here. To a degree, that would happen. The older I got, I said, God, get me out of here. And he says, no, I'd like to come in there. Why don't you invite me in? Instead of trying to get out of where you are. I want to in, you want out, I win. And he does, doesn't he? he? He wins. If he wants something in you while you're where you are, he will stay with you where you are until he gets what he wants in you. In you. Which is a beautiful thing. Because it's not about what, how, I'm, how well I'm doing. It's about receiving how well he is. How, and exchanging my righteousness for his. His help. So he keeps on going, Hebrews 12, and he says, uh, he had, consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. I used to think that serving God would make God move, move mountains on my behalf to make everything a better benefit for me so that I could do better for him. But Jesus walked through the earth in the most hostile negative environment that the world had ever known or ever would be shown to a man. 
the most rejected man that ever walked the planet from this conception to the cross. He was t he was ridiculed and all that. But he was the most loved man that ever walked the planet. He was loved. And he practiced. So he was a son. He learned obedience. He learned to listen under the sound of his father's words concerning him. Off of the circumstances that, that were causing pain and distress in his life. You see, it's kind of like you have to have a counterbalance to discover. For truth to be made true, fully blossom, and fully be un, unremovable from our holding, lies have to come and try this, try that, why that. And at first we, we are swept by them or we are duped by them, but finally we start to go, you know what, I may have done something really stupid yesterday, but I'm still really loved today. And I need to return to the Lord and place into the place of fellowship that is afforded me through Jesus Christ. No other person. I can't be here except for Jesus. I don't even want to dare show up in the glory of presence of God outside of inside Jesus. And so I, 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 I go quick into there. But there's also this, this con, I'm, I'm, he wants me to not be so moved by everything around me. So he's not just removing everything from me. He just says, come deeper, come, come further into me. You've not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And I agree. I, I mean, wow, that's what Jesus was doing. He was standing and saying, I am going to not submit to the sin of the earth except when the Father puts it on me. I'm not going to submit to the rejection on the planet until the Father does it to me. I am not going to yield to the wrath and hatred of man until the Father releases that so that I could absorb it, become it, and then it could be totally exhausted upon me. That's my calling. But while, until that moment, I'm going to live in union, fellowship, and, and light. But I have to keep agreeing with him. See, uh, let me say it this way. Two, Thursday morning, I'm taking a walk, and I'm so enjoying my time with the Father, with the Lord, with the Lord Jesus and my fellowship with him. And he comes to me in John 15. Oh, you've called me your friend. That's so cool that you'd look to me and call me a friend. And then I'm realizing, yeah, but I don't, it's not for me to call you my friend. That's not the invitation because the friendship is under you as I'm being conformed to you. And if I learn who you are and submit to who you are, I become, I get all the benefits of who you are. You're not trying to become who I am because you already did that. That was the first coming. Now the second coming is I'm going to become all of who you are. So I have to yield to you. I have to submit to you. I have to, and Jesus literally, I went and looked it up today. In John 15, he says, no longer I call you friends as long as you do what I command you. And my commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. So here's now the maturity. And if we can go back to Hebrews and as you have, forgot, have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he re reveals, receives. Now that's the crazy thing. You see, if we have a, a, a slave mentality, an orphan spirit, a sense of fatherlessness. We think, oh no, I'm, I'm under some discipline. That must mean God doesn't love me. No, it means the exact opposite. He's going, you know, that isn't going to be a help to you. It's, it's standing in the way of the image of my son. That's a lie you're believing. That's an that's a action you're trying to prove perform for acceptance that you does not get you accepted my son gets you accepted and so God will say I'm, I've got to let's move let's move into a harmony I am going to speak to you I'm going to pull you into a new place I'm going to ask of you I'm going to demand things of you I'm going to require you to believe and agree with Jesus while you're walking through hell and I'm asking you to bless people when they're cursing you I'm asking you to love people that are are unlovely and I'm just going to call you up call you up and call you out and that's, that's the discipline. If we endure the chastening, God deals with us as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if we are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then we are illegitimate and not sons. Meaning that we are not 
in submission or hearing or receiving or being brought into that. Wow, Dad. Whoa. And you see, the thing is, I used to think it was living holy in an external fashion primarily or as equal to the heart issue. Now I've discovered more and more it's accepting the provision of the Son and recognizing every time I'm trying to do it on my own and give him the, the right ac the access point. And it's scary. It's scary to let Jesus help you instead of help yourself. It's scary to, to, to say, Father, I want to accept that Jesus Christ is sufficient in this moment, and whatever it is that I'm going to have to walk to, he'll be with me, and we're going to have an outcome, and I'm going to have fellowship, and I'm going to pull on joy, and I'm going to pull on being loved, and I'm going to take time every day in your presence until I know I am loved, 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 loved. And that's hard. It'll make you give your prayer life. You're not praying to... I mean, prayer is to unionize yourself back into the truth of what you've been given in Christ. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. And then you get that place, and God speaks, and he, and he calls. He really, all the discipline that we are, but it's the worst discipline in the sense of the hardest we'll ever have to submit to is to accept the testimony of his son, 1 John 5. And that in those who believe have eternal life, and his this life is in the son. The blessing of the Father is in the Son. The prosperity of your future is in the Son. All of our everything is in the Son. So we, 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 we're not just like, hmm, oh, that's cool. No, you've got to find him. He's a treasure. You, 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 and when, you, when you're in a squeeze, you go, okay, let's go. Furthermore, we've had a human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. They, how much more readily shall we be in subjection to the Father of spirits? God, the Father of all spirits, takes us in his Son, Christ, accepts us and receives us. Never will we be rejected. Never will we be sent out because our faith is in what he did in his Son and accomplished when he raised him from the dead and now has seated him at the heavenly. But he's not leaving us in our current carnal, fleshly funk. He's going to pull that out of us. Not, well, actually, he's going to pull us out of it. Because we will come into more and more submission, subjection to him, what he's saying. And, we, and again, the, the learning of who you are in Christ is harder than trying to get a good self-help program working. Because we love to stir ourselves up. But, to, but we're actually, the goal is to enter into rest. And to come through the word, living word of God. And to let him go, go into separating soul and spirit and bones and marrow, joints and marrow and open up our heart and show us the real motives that are going on. That's scary, but it's where transformation happens. For indeed, for a few days, chastened us as seemed best to them. But, for, but he, for our prophet, that we might be partakers of his holiness... So when we raise our children, we have a certain set amount of time. And when we spend that time as best we can, we all fail in doing it. But we all also have some successes, and we have a certain amount of time. And it's like we have to release. And, and that starts the next generation in growing and doing, learning their place. And it, we all keep repeating a circle of discovery. But in the case of Father God, he says, I'll be with you for eternity and I know you in my son in his complete maturity, though you're not matured yet. He's perfect, but you're not yet. You're, he's completed, but you're still being completed. That's why Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He said, I'll start you in the faith, and I'll bring you to the finish of the faith. In fact, there really is the faith given to us in Christ, awakened by the scriptures and the spirit. And he goes, here we go. You're going to be a partaker of of God's holiness, which is a really crazy idea. Because when you become near God, he says, I must be regarded as holy. You cannot just act as you would act just because you have a right to act the way you want to act. Not in my presence. You have to understand that your acceptance is in my son. So that's, that changes the whole way you approach God. When you go, I'm coming and I would never re come as close as I can come right into the Holy of Holies, 
but I can because I'm in the sun. And I'm coming through the new and living way. And you start, the scripture starts building, the foundation. You say, all right, I'm going to do that. And so I'm partaking, I'm learning, I'm discovering. It's like Moses learning the ways of God. We all start to learn his ways. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So here's our option again. God's saying, I want, to, I want access, and I'm going to make a, some points here, and I want you to agree with my son instead of yourself. It might be self-pity, it might be anger, it might be rejection, it might be fear, it might be poverty, it might be uh, offense, it might be prejudice, you might have a screaming problem at television shows. I, it doesn't matter. It's not becoming a Christian. What becomes a Christian is praise. What becomes a Christian is submission. What becomes a Christian is kindness, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, all of that. But you, that you can't do those. If we could do those, we'd just have a new law. We can only become those in Christ. We can only receive those inside Christ. It took me, I, I knew all the gifts of the Spirit, but I didn't know the fruit of the Spirit. I memorized all the gifts because I liked the power. But the fruit, that was like, oh, that's just so condemning. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Oh, because I tried doing that. But you see, one day, it dawned on me. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not me. Take me away from the fruit tree, and I just become that shrub again. Because I don't produce life. I, there's no life coming from me. It's so humbling to say, you know, please, just, I know one thing. Don't get me in the middle of whatever we're doing. Come through me. Use me. But it isn't upon, about me, or it isn't coming from me. I just got to keep letting you access. And he's accessing right now. He's accessing all of us right now because there's, there's hearts, issues that really, the Lord would really like to start stepping into and say, I, I'm changing. I, I'm, I'm bringing you into a better place. And, it's, and forgiveness is the key. This is a covenant of forgiveness, to be forgiven and to forgive. Let me finish this. It be, yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness who, who've been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down in the feeble knees. This is where we'll get in life. I will, I've been there many, many, many times. I just get lazy. My hands hang down. My knees are feeble. And make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. So you go, you know, I don't want to be here, but I'm not leaving until God does what he's doing, until the sun becomes sufficient, until I'm free from myself, until I'm rejoicing in Jesus, until I'm so happy that I had to go down this tunnel and going, whoa, this is the greatest thing ever happened to me, not because the thing itself brought a better benefit, but I found Jesus, and he found me, and he liberated me from me. And when you have those moments and they start small and they start like, you go, well, I don't know if that really happened or not. Yes, it is. Every time. Every time you say, I'm going to give you the next hour. I'm going to take my Bible. I don't know where to start. And I'm going to start. I'm going to pray. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to give you this discipline because you're spirit. And I need life from the Father of Spirit. And I need to subject myself into a position where something can be said and I can hear it and I can respond and I can praise you and I can worship. Now I'm going to take all of my complaining and turn it into praising. I'm going to take all of my grumbling and begin to be thankful. And instead of being thankful for a crappy life, sorry, I'm going to be thankful for a glorious Savior. See, don't change the life. Change the heart. Change the focus. Change the person. I'm not going to try to make myself think, oh, this is pretty cool. No, it isn't. As long as you compare yourself one with another, look at each other, think somebody else has got something better than you, think that what, they, what you need will really make you happy, what you, they have you want. That's just lust, covetousness. That's just idolatry. It's death. And you're practicing it. A believer, a believer in Jesus, practicing lust and covetousness and jealousy. But you didn't think it was. No. You were just having, you were, you were claiming your inheritance. That neighbor's car ought to be mine. And 
the fear. That's not really fear. It's just I'm recognizing I'm not supposed to be satisfied. Where Do you see that that's why the heart needs to have those discerning moments? Whoa, that really wasn't as righteous as I thought. <laughs> see, and that prayer is a beautiful place because God catches you there. He doesn't have to do it everywhere else. So you get healed. You get healed. You get healed. You, we get healed. We get healed. We get healed. You know, I don't know you're healed. You're in where you were that was making your life miserable. And now you're in the same place where you were that made your life miserable. And you're so full of joy. It sound, feels like you shouldn't be there. Because the life is no longer dictating you. Where you live is not who you are. It's who, whose you are is who you are. And now you're only you're giving him access. And so, beloved, don't be afraid to be caught. You've got to be caught. You can't get free unless you get caught. The, the unforgiving debtor, he's just trucking along, owing millions of dollars. One day, it's time for accounts to be received. And he's going, whoa, I have nothing to pay. His master says, well, then we'll sell you and everything else. And he begs, please, please, just give me more time. I promise I'll pay everything. And the master moves with just compassion. He says, you're never going to get that. You're not going to... You're not gonna, you, got, you owe me $10 million, and you're about to be unemployed. You're never going to pay me. And I don't, yeah, you'd be in debtor, debtor's prison, but I'm, I just, I forgive you. Whoa! Opportunity, begin again, start over. We can get ahead. We can make a new place. I can't wait. And he's just rejoicing in his new fortune, and he sees a man who just owes him about $10,000. He goes, wow, this is awesome. In a few moments, I'm going to be $10,000 richer because this is a legitimate debt. This man really owes me this money. And so he comes to the man and says, give me my money. And the man says, I, I will, but, but I, I can't right now. I don't have it. Give me time. No, no. And he says the same exact words, but instead of a heart moved by compassion because he had received compassion, he moves in his covetousness that never had been addressed. You see, Without repentance, there is no forgiveness. Without forgiveness, you're not out of your problem. You're just delaying your punishment. And what I mean by that is that whatever you are doing, you're just going to do it bigger. You're going to be released from the moment. And we're going, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I promise. And we make all those promises. I'll never, 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 never. But the heart never got convicted to go, you know what? Wow. How much goodness was just shown me. How much kindness was just given to me? How much love was just shown to me? And because I'm now receiving that, I can start giving that. If it's just an interruption and delay and I hope to get ahead, then I'm not yet having been impacted. So when we are healed, it says pursue peace with all people and holiness. Which out without, no one will see the Lord. The Lord is... The Lord is obscured to the unclean, to the unseen, to the, to the carnal, to the fleshly, to the worldly. The Bible says if you have love of the world, then the love of the Father isn't in us. And then we'll walk around going, I wish I felt loved. Well, love is available, but you can't find love in worldly terms with a worldly pursuit. It has to be a pursuit of his face, to behold his son, to receive what he's done to honor him, to give him that place. Then all of a sudden, I promise you, I promise you, if you just give him a little bit of time every day and say, we want to see this glorified Christ seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. I want to acknowledge that everything Jesus has accomplished, the Father did for him, he's now mine. And I can know joy. I can know peace. I can know righteousness. I can know hope. I can get help. I can get victory. I can get triumph. But I'm not trying to get it from here. And I'm not trying to get it from here. I'm just receiving it. I'm just receiving it. And beloved, when you have that first moment, oh, the wind of the Spirit blows over your heart. What was that? That was love, joy. And there he is. I give my life to you. And you go, oh, this is going to be great. I, we're going to have the best day I ever had. But now you're going to get the counterbalance, the pain, the trouble, the struggle that doesn't go away. Now the question is, do I deal with the struggle and the trouble and try to get it to go away or do I just start ignoring it and beholding him 
That's basically transformation 101. To start to behold him because he is truth. What you're in is a lie. It will, at best, be a temporary lie of a light affliction. But there's an eternal weight of glory that's building as you behold him in the midst of the conflict. And you say, oh, well, let's, let's, let's do that again. Let's do that again. Wow. Let's, and it's just, he says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Grace is the all-sufficiency of God helping us in all our insufficiency of capacity. He's the one that makes it happen. He's the one who stoops down to show kindness. He's the one who pulls us up to love us. That's the grace of God. If we fall short of it, it's usually because the expectation we placed on the grace didn't happen. And so now we're bitter. Bitter. I used to think, don't get bitter, get broken. I, I, I just, I'll be honest with you. You're going to, the grace is going to fail in some set of circumstances, and you're going to get bitter. You're going to get frustrated with God. You're going to be upset with him. After all I just did, that's what you did for me. You may not say it, but you'll feel it. And that root, it goes, a root. A root isn't seen. It just starts to grow in you. And then one day you just say, what in the world am I doing? I'm not, not even worth this. Root of business then springs up and causes trouble. And by this, many get defiled. You go, where in the world did that come from? Because I was playing the game. I was speaking the words. I was showing up and doing my thing. And I was waiting for my breakthrough. But I didn't know I was growing bitter and angry and frustrated. He says, lest there be a fornicator or a profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now, Esau had the right of the birth to succeed and to follow his father Isaac. And we would have called... Israel by the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But because of his strength, because of his resourcefulness, because of his athletic prowess, because he was handsome, strong, red hair, you know, whatever it was, he just took a pass on this seeking God stuff. His, his brother Jacob, they were twins. Jacob was kind of like a little, yeah, you know, he's just kind of a mama boy. Hung out in the tent. But in that tent, there was a grandpa called Abraham. And for 13 years before Abraham left and passed on, he had listened to his grandpa. Tell me the story again. When, when you're, you took dad, my dad, and you've been told to take him up on the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. What happened? What what? How, you mean you lived down in what we would today call Iraq? And then you were, God said to move, and you went all the way up to where we would call today Turkey with your father and family. And then when your father died, God said, do you come now and follow me and leave everything? And then you came into, uh, into what we would call today the West Bank, which is by Shechem, and you on a tree, you got... He said, I'm giving you all of this. And then he said, and you called on him. And then you got in trouble and went all the way to Egypt. And then you almost, you almost lost my grandma. Because she got pulled into somebody's harem. And then God delivered you. He was learning the life. He was learning the story. Esau's kicking it, man. He's out there rock and rolling, man. Surfing on the weekends, doing whatever he's doing. He's fleshing. Nothing wrong with fleshing. I love surfing. But I have learned that I love Jesus more than surfing. And I need Jesus more than I need a surfboard. I mean, I, I know when I got saved, it's he, keep me surfing for the Lord. Give me wax for my board. Jeez. But I understand that, that without this union, everything else will go into disunion and, dis, and, and disservice. So Esau comes off one of his great trips. He's famished. He's hungry. He can't wait. And there's little old Jacob cooking a little lentil soup. But he's hungry. And he's going, I want some lentil soup. And Jacob's going, gosh, I'm not in. All I want is that birthright. I want access. I want to follow my grandfather and my father into the future. I want that. So he thinks and says, I'll give you the, the, the soup for your birthright. And Esau goes, well, I don't see any value in the birthright when I'm about to die. 
See, this is, the bad, this is the root of bitterness. You don't value what you've been given. You don't understand what you're throwing away. You don't understand that this is the testing process to value what God considers very holy. If you do not consider it holy, you won't find it. But if you value it, you'll have these tests. And if you go through it, you just, well, you know, afterward, he, he ate the soup, lost his birthright. Afterwards, it comes time for blessing, Father's blessing. Isaac calls him and says, son, I'm, I'm about to pass, and I want to release the Father's blessing. Now go get me some, go kill one of those venom, venomous, not venomous, but these, you know, this. go get me an elk, a deer, I don't know, but that food I like, and roast it and make it. Oh, see, they were kind of fleshly. I mean, nothing wrong with all that. Nothing wrong with it to enjoy the benefits and the blessings of the earth. But again, Isaac had gotten blind. He couldn't see anymore. Got kind of hard in hearing. And so Rachel, or no, Rebecca, hears his, her husband's directive and says, go. And so as soon as she, he leaves Esau to go get the, catch the prey and cook it, and she says to Jacob, Jacob, your father is about to release the blessing. The blessing is you've got to, you've got to be blessed. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll cook your, husband, your, my, your father. I know how to cook a meal. I'll cook him a meal. And he's going, yeah, but this is not that. I'm, I, I, Esau's hairy. I'm fair-skinned. He, Esau carries the earth with him. And I'm, you know, he says, no, I'll get you some clothes. We'll put some skin, you know, wool on your arms. And we'll get you to, Esau's clothes. They stink. No, it'll cover everything. And you bring it in. So he goes in. Now, this is total deception. Jacob will cost him a life of misery, but he will eventually be known as Israel because he struggled with God and prevailed. Because he said, no, I, 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 this, I, I, one thing I'm seeking, that's your face, and I want this place. So, but now, he gets the blessing, and the blessing is put on him. All of a sudden, here comes Esau with the meal. Dad, I'm here. I can't wait. Eat and then bless me. He goes, whoa. And, and he almost freaks out. I mean, just loses his breath because, what do you mean? I just blessed your son and he's blessed. I mean, I, yeah, that's your brother? I just blessed him. I can't even remove that blessings on him because he, whoa. And so he says, you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. That's the place of the Father's blessing. It's, it's available to all in Jesus Christ, but so few make it their goal of life to receive. And then at times late, we miss the moment, and later we try to find it, and then we don't know how to find repentance. It's like Saul and David. David committed far worse heinous sin and, and disobedience than Saul did. But Saul never built, cultivated a relationship with God, so he was a man pleaser, and he, and he never went deep and found a God, God's pleasure. David, on the other hand, was just a shepherd boy playing music and having encounters and in an early time, he said, I want to seek your face. And God said, seek my face. And his heart said, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. It just, and then over a lifetime, one goes up, the other goes down. Now, here's the cool thing. We're at a Father's Day blessing. We can make a decision. No matter what we did yesterday, we can make a decision. I want to go there. I don't want to go here. I don't want to live a successful life on the earth with all the benefits that earth provides. And not have this one. So I'd rather make this, this relationship my goal than the earth's relationship be what I'm pursuing. And in doing that, here's the good news. It took me 37 years, not all that, but recently, to learn that everything is in Jesus Christ. The Father's blessing is in Jesus Christ. The love of God is in Jesus Christ. The joy of God is in Jesus Christ. It says, He, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than all of the companions in the heavens. 
because you loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, he has blessed you. He's anointed you. That's why in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. That's why when you see Jesus is smiling in triumph and joy and victory. And when you see him in your prayer closet, then you begin to go, that Jesus will follow, will help me in my day I'm going to walk in. And the resource starts to change. You don't resource yourself. You resource him. And you don't worry about the outcome because he's already the outcome. And it may take a while for transformation to catch up, but he's already the outcome. And beloved, that's the Father's blessing to make that decision. Now, the only way in it is to forgive everybody and to be forgiven in everything. And the way we do that is in Jesus Christ because in him is all forgiveness. He is the covenant of forgiveness. And today we get to do this because I believe the Papa, I believe Papa is here. I feel the Holy Spirit coming to say, I want to rest upon sons. I want to rest upon daughters. I want to call forth futures. I want to break open the, the limitations. First, internal limitations so that a spirit man can come alive. Then we'll deal with the outward limitations when I need you to do what I called you to do. So let's stand, can we? Oh, I just missed a step. I'm sorry. I don't know if you really want this. That was my problem. I missed that step. I just told you to stand up. Now I don't even know if you want it. Do you want the Father's blessing inside Christ? Do you want this? Are you, are, are you, do you value? Do you see this? Something pulling on your heart. The story is enough to, yeah, I'm going to figure this out. So lift up your hands. That's your prayer. Will you show us? Would you come to each of us? Holy Spirit, you're the reminder of what Jesus has said to us individually in the past. Holy Spirit, you're the guide to show us what Jesus is doing and going to do in our life in the future. You're the one who announces the things that are God's in Christ that are ours to receive. You're the one who convicts us of where the world is in us so that we can let go of the world and take hold of the love of Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, send the Holy Spirit to announce over each of us your blessing, your provision, and your victory. The Lord says I am toward this glorious man, resurrected son of man, high priest, king, who's become who we are becoming in our pursuit, who is already fully completed, glorified. And with your mouth, I just ask you to say, Lord, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. I want to follow you where I am to follow you. I want to seek your face. Please, disengage me from obstacles, obstructions, from weights and sins that want to stop this race that you've started long ago. I need your help. Jesus, I'm calling on you. Save me. Heal me, deliver me, awaken me, free me, bring me into you experientially. You are everything I need. No matter where I am, you're the answer. The way, the truth, and the life, and I'm coming to Father 
through you. Whoa. Whoa. There's doors opening off of our lives. There's, there's windows coming alive. Curtains are being drawn. And the sun is beginning to shine. The light of the glorious gospel in the face of Jesus Christ is beginning to shine in the dark places. And he's not coming with shame or blame. He's coming with freedom and deliverance and breakthrough. He's unlocking hearts from brokenness and bitterness and anger and contempt. And he's creating praise and erupting with joy and victory. Oh, the gift of repentance and the knowledge of truth and coming to our senses and escaping the snare of the enemy who took us captive just to make us do what he wanted done. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you receiving? Are you? I, we got it. We see it's happening right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Susan, Roland, come on up here. Come on up here. I love it. It's all about Receive, 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 receive. It's not heart. Believing heart, speaking mouth. Reaching with your hands, receiving with your heart. Take hold. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Yep, all of you. I want us to stretch out our hand to this family, the Carroll family. They leave in the next week to go to the Philippines, where they're from, but where they're also from here now and sent as missionaries to help pastors in some of the most desolate, desolate remote areas to bring them support, encouragement, words of faith, life, rice, everything. If you want to sow into them, you can do so by just putting a check or online and just say to Philippines, and we'll know that this is going to this half family to carry blessing. And this, and this whole family now is going this time, this year. Yeah. So we declare now, Lord, as we close this service, wow. No, you can't. We, oh. we bless this couple and their children and their family unit to go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains, the hills break forth with singing. The trees of the field clap their hands. Open doors favor, yeah, grace yeah. in travel and mercy, that they are be able to move freely in the islands and to bring fully the word of God and to encourage and to release life and breakthrough and blessing. We send you out in the, in the full blessing of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and all of his benefits and all of his anointings in Jesus' name. Whoa. Yeah, just receive. Receive. Now, everybody, I said this was the last thing, and God said, no, it isn't. I want my blessing on my sons. Yeah. So hold your hands up. You and I in Christ have places of love that we've never yet touched, joy that we've never yet experienced, acceptance that we haven't yet fully received. There are so much. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places are in Christ Jesus. So Father God says, my blessing rests upon my son. And you, in my son, receive all my blessing. Acceptance in my beloved son. Sonship in my beloved son. Redemption in my beloved son. Spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in my beloved son. Acceptance and holiness and without blame and without wrath and instead inside of love inheritance in my son all of this is yours receive the blessing my blessing today you are my son and i am well pleased walk with me walk in my son and you will see beautiful things that are yet to break forth for your inheritance is in my son your future is in my son your breakthrough is in my son your healing is in my son your victory is in my son Jesus, the Messiah, Lord, is your future. And there is your blessing. Receive your blessing now. Go ahead. Pull it up. Pull. Pull on. Receive him. Pull on. Don't go. Come on. Come on. He's giving us gifts today. Gifts. 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 Yes. Yeah.
Jesus' name, I send us out. As we send this family to the Philippines, we send each of us into our neighborhoods. We send each of us into the workplace to be lovers, to be healers, to be deliverers, to carry Jesus Christ wherever we go. So we're going to send Larry and Melanie to begin to pray for the nations. And then we're going to bless one another as neighbors, release good things, and go away giving good things, and expect Jesus Christ to show up because men will find the love of Christ. It just can't be hidden when we're giving it away. God bless you. We love you. Everyone, we love you. Praise Jesus.